And when I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma in 2015-ish um, and told I only had maybe two years to live, um, it was really kind of a spiritual wake-up call. And I thought, well, all the money in the world and all the fame in the world isn't going to help me now, so what do I do? Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about changing your attitude from surviving to thriving. I'm delighted to welcome Kevin Roth. Kevin is an international best-selling author, internationally known singer and dulcimer player, and cancer survivor. You can reach Kevin at his website, kevinroth.org, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Kevin. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Well, it's good to be here, Linda. Thanks for having me. It is quite the honor. You have had the most amazing musical career, starting with your first record deal at age 15. You've won numerous awards. You have had um, over 50 recordings. You sang the song for the hit PBS show about Shining Time Station. Just amazing. And then everything changed with a medical diagnosis. So would you be willing to briefly share your story? I did have a lot of success. And part of the reason I had a lot of success is because I was under the uh, delusion that fame and fortune created happiness. And when I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma in 2015-ish um, and told I only had maybe two years to live, um, it was really kind of a spiritual wake-up call. And I thought, well, all the money in the world and all the fame in the world isn't going to help me now, so what do I do? During that time, you know, when people hit what's called the dark night of the soul, whether it's through an illness or the loss of someone or just upheaval that we all go through, it seems like you can never see the way out. You know, it, it gets, it's, you know, gets very dark and very fearful. So what I did is I rejected the cancer diagnosis and said, you know, they removed the two spots where the melanoma was. And then they said, it'll come, probably come back within a year, 70% chance that it'll return. So I just said to myself and the universe, it's not going to come back. And I was living in Kansas at the time and I just recreated my whole life story. I said, I'm moving to Southern California. I'm going to be an artist, a musician. I'm going to do what I want. And I'm changing the story from this uh, guy named Kevin Roth, who is a victim and is unhappy and is almost broke and is uh, to no, 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 no. There's this really new guy and he's going to be really happy in Southern California. And that's what I literally did. I recreated the whole story. I found an apartment within my budget. I, uh, and a year went by, the cancer never returned. And I said, I'm out of here. So when I got to San Diego, uh, within a few years, someone suggested to me that I teach people what I did to drop all the drama in my life, become happier and, and create uh, a life of fun for other people. So it's really mostly about radical self-love. So that's what I do. I'm a, a mentor, a teacher. Some people call me a coach. It doesn't really matter what you call me, but that's what I do. And I sometimes use the dulcimer when I do it. Wow. Okay. You touched on so many topics and so many things that we misunderstand. Most people misunderstand from the very first words you said, where I was under the delusion, the fame, and fortune would bring me happiness. Yeah. And I have talked to so many people who have overcome that same misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. The world, media, everything tells us that is what we're searching for. If you have money, if you're popular, then you are happy. This equals this. And over and over and over again, I hear stories of people saying, I had the fame. I had the fortune. It did not bring me happiness, but this is what did. And you narrowed it down to one thing. 
and it is loving yourself and choosing your story. And I think those two things, those two elements are so revolutionary. It works consistently. And yet it is so contrary to the popular belief that there are few people who buy in. And that is amazing. So well done for being able to rewrite your story. That is amazing. And the, the power of, of, of rewriting your story and even creating health benefits to prolong your life. So it's not only happier, but it's happier and longer. I mean, that's, that's a nice combination, I would say. It, it is. It, it certainly beats the alternative. <laughs> uh, in my experience, I create and I teach my student, my clients, to recreate your day every day. We're like uh, musical instruments, like the guitar. You know, we start out tuned, and then throughout the day, you need to retune it because something goes out of tune, either the weather or you're playing or something. So it's just a matter of retuning. What I do as a mentor to people is I teach you how to first get it in tune. So how do I do that? The first thing is I ask, what don't you want in your life anymore? You have to be clear. What don't you want anymore? Second thing is, what do you want? And then the third thing is, okay, let's build a game plan to build this new foundation, this new life. And then you tweak it. So there's a big element that's part of my teaching, which is spiritual. And I have clients who are Christians, Buddhists, atheists. Uh, I teach everything because uh, it's all the same concept to me. Without that element, uh, life becomes difficult because the truth is that, you know, when we believe our negative thoughts, we suffer, right? So thoughts equal uh, feelings and then we suffer. So e even if it's something as silly as, uh, you know, oh, this person didn't call me back. You know, I guess I really made them angry and you don't hear from them for a week or two where normally you would have heard from them all the time. And then suddenly, uh, if you believe that without investigating it, you're in a state of hell, really. So this recently happened to me. And then this morning I got a long email from a friend. Sorry, I've been out of the country. I've been traveling and on and on and on. So I didn't believe my thoughts. I didn't take on the drama. And I said, okay, we'll wait and see. Is it true? Is it not true? And it keeps my life light. And that's the key. Keep your life light. Ooh, keep your life light. Mm -hmm. So we often hear the, the, the phrase, I've got a lot on my plate. Mm -hmm. like, like there's just a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And much of the stuff that we have on our plate is self-imposed. Mm -hmm. Like you said in your story, I sent a message to my friend. He usually responds. He doesn't. And then from that point, you take these facts, sent an email, didn't get a response to this huge story that now hurts my heart. It hurts my head. I'm thinking about all these different things. Now I got a lot of stuff on my plate. Whereas if we can let that go and relax and just trust a little bit, then that's not a burden that we have to carry. And isn't it interesting that it's so simple and yet so hard, unless you buy in. Mm -hmm. So when people say, I have a lot on my plate, I tell them you need a smaller plate. <laughs> you know, um, I live in a very small-ish, maybe 500 square foot apartment. I could afford a house. I can afford a lot of things. I have absolutely no need for them because the freedom isn't about money. People say, oh, I want money. I want money, money, money. Nobody wants money. Money's a, 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 money's a piece of paper, okay? What we want is the feeling that money gives us, which is freedom. Mm. So how do you get freedom if you don't have a lot of money? Well, let's look at, just as an example, what creates the lack or the thinking of lack of freedom? So are you living beyond your means for the time? Are you in credit card debt? Are you in toxic relationships? Are you wanting to pursue 
your passion, but you're so busy with your job and taking Johnny to the baseball games and feeding the husband. And, you know, you're not living, you're putting your life off for quote, when I retire. So let me tell you that a lot of people, when they retire, illness comes because they're living a life for the future. It's not a dress rehearsal. You know, I found <laughs> we only get one run, right? Well, I don't know how many runs we get, but we want to make the run that we have, you know, pretty happy. So I, I had a I had a client and she said, you know, my my mother drives me nuts. She calls me like, you know, 20 times a day. Oh. So I told her, I said, you know, don't answer the phone. Send her a message. I'm busy with uh, whatever. The reason we hold on to these things is we believe that it's going to make us feel better. The same reason why people do drugs or overeat. It, it's a numbing process. So instead of saying, oh, I've got to deal with this, I've got to do this, I've got all these things in my life, change them. It, because it's easier to change them than to stay with them. When you change the way you think of things or about things, the things you look at change. When you replace what doesn't work in your life with what does, you don't go back to what doesn't work. Why would you? But people are locked into fear and very hard on themselves. I, I was exactly the same way. That's why I, with the people that I work with, they're ready to change. They're saying, you know what? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then they find me and we talk, um, you know, or they buy my book or they hear me on a podcast and we work together and they see how simple it is just by changing the way you look at things. There's a couple of things you mentioned that I think are absolutely key. And that one is they were ready to change. Yep. And you mentioned a little bit earlier that it is easier to do this than it is to stay the same. Now, I think that there is a tipping point because we want to stay the same. Most it's just human nature. We want to stay the same. We say we're stuck, and sometimes we want to stay stuck because we don't want to change. We want to change. We want things to be better and we want to stay the same. And it is not until we reach the tipping point of where we want to change more than we want to stay the same that we can actually do something about it. And the magic is, as you mentioned, it, it seems hard. It seems scary. I'm afraid. I'm afraid because it's something I haven't done before. And what I'm living in feels so normal. It's familiar. Whatever's familiar feels safe. And if you're going to teach me to do something different, oh, that's kind of scary. And yet when you actually do it and get through those walls and get through that fear, it is easier. It is lighter. There is more peace. There is more happiness. And I just, oh, I, I, I wish we could do more to help people wake up and to reach that tipping point of being ready to change. Sometimes we have to hit the hot bot the, the hit the rock bottom before we're ready to change. And I would love to catch people before they have to get to that place. Well, you can't fix people. Mm-mm. So people are ready when they're ready. You know, the, the saying, uh, one of my clients um, wrote a review of my book on Amazon and she said, when the student is ready, the teacher comes. So it, it's better to figure that out now than to hit bottom because stress causes illness and uh, there is a happier way to do it, but you have to be willing it's not even a matter of willing. You should ask yourself, am I happy? And how could I be happier? It's that simple. So I was a, a big self-help book group. Uh, I was, dicta I was um, addicted to self-help books. So the pattern that I see is a lot of people, and I was the same way, they buy self-help books. And they're all gung-ho within for two, three weeks. And then they go back in old patterns. The way to stick to something that you're enthusiastic about and, and that you resonate with is either one, get into a program that, that helps you. Let's say if you have a, let's say a, a food or a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction, get into a 12-step program. 
or, or whatever program that you'd like. If you're looking to really change, if you feel stuck, find uh, a mentor, a teacher, or a coach like myself who keeps you accountable, who each week will say to you, okay, so did you think about what we talked about last week? Yes. Okay. And what do you think? Well, this happened and this happened. And then we, again, we kind of adjust it a little bit. We, we retune. The, the, the beauty of what I do is to see the change, the quick change in, in, my, in my client's life. It's pretty remarkable um, when they pay attention and they do what I ask, which they all do. Um, they, it, it, it's a wake up call. And a lot of them don't, aren't unhappy when they come to me. They're uh, stuck or, they, or they've been, or they resonate with something that, that they've heard me say. And they say, you know what, there's something there. I have a pretty good life, you know, we're financially okay, the kids are good, but you know what? I feel like I don't have enough time for me. This mostly are, are, are women. Oh. So I say, let's create me time. Let's figure out what you put off when you got married, what you put off when you had children, all the things that you didn't have time for now that the kids are kind of grown or you've got things relatively settled in your life or not, Let's create me time. So I'm a, I'm, I love doing that for people. And when you get your me time, then you're able to take the time to figure out what you don't want in your life, what you do want, what needs to go, what doesn't need to go. You know, I, I had a client who wanted a closer relationship with her husband. And we were talking about the relationship and what she discovered was that when she finally does get time with her husband, it's, did you do this? We need to do that. You know, it's, it's a list of things, mm -hmm. you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta plan this trip. We've got to, there, there's no peace. It was a, a business meeting of sorts. Yeah. You know, they're both busy, they're busy, busy lives. So I said, why don't you, you know, just have a date night where you're not allowed to talk about the, the construction in your house where you don't talk about anything, but you enjoy yourselves and you have fun, you know? Um, but people, like you said, get locked into what isn't working for them. And when you learn about mindful awareness, which is what I teach, one of the things that I teach, you become very aware that, oh, mm, I'm starting to feel this tension or I'm starting to feel this negativity. What is that? And then when you look at it, you say, oh, and then it just falls away. But we usually, most people carry it. You become mindfully aware. You're paying attention to the way that you feel. Mm -hmm. And you're becoming aware of where those feelings are coming from or the cause or whatever you would, you would say. And becoming aware, when you talk about what don't I want more, what, what don't I want in my life, and what do I want in my life, that takes some awareness as well. You have to jump off the treadmill for just a minute and think about what am I doing that I want to do, and what am I doing that I don't want to do? Yeah, it takes I, a moment of reflection. Yeah, I've had many clients leave their jobs and create their own businesses. And they create their own time and uh, they live much happier lives because they're doing what they love. You know, there's the role and there's the soul. So your role is as a mother or a father or a business person or a parent or a spouse, but your soul may want to be a potter or a writer or uh, a musician or uh, a go-go dancer. I mean, who knows, right? So, but your if your soul isn't matching your role or your role matching your soul, you're living a half life. That is beautifully put. I love it. So that's that's the thing that I love to do is to help people do it, learn how to do it. Um, the reason that I've been told that I'm so effective as, as a mentor or teacher is because I literally teach what I lived through. This wasn't a course I took. This wasn't reading 1600 self-help books. This is what Kevin went through when I got a death sentence, which was a wake-up call. And I said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. 
I mean, I told three oncologists I wasn't going with their plan. I found a doctor who actually agreed with me. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. He didn't want to do anything to me because he said there's no cure. So why do this and why do that? Let's just wait. There is a 30% chance it won't come back, but you know, there's nothing you can do even if it does. Everybody else wanted to take lymph nodes out and do all kinds of things. I write about that all in my book, Between the Notes. But I, I said, I'm not going to stand for your negativity, for your drama, for your telling me how my life should go. You told them this in these oh, words? Absolutely. There was a woman, a doctor, I didn't like her at all, but I had to use her. She was an oncologist and she ran tests to see where my cancer had spread. And she showed me the screen and she said, well, and she almost said this in one breath without congratulations, without, oh, this is wonderful news. She said, well, the cancer hasn't spread anywhere. So now what we'd like to do is to set you up with this other doctor to see because uh, you, you need to have the lymph nodes in that area removed. It was under my chin. There was one lymph node that was cancerous. And I said, I don't understand because there's no cancer on the screen. Why would you want me to have a lymphonectomy? And she said, because it's protocol. Ooh, I have issues with protocol. Yeah, and I said, my name is- This yeah, my is name. what we do just because we do it. Yeah, and I said, my Thank name, you. yeah, my name is in protocol. <laughs> And I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in these meetings where you're telling people these things, because that is not the standard protocol. That is not what people do when their doctors tell them that this is the next step. That's right. So, they usually so say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Exactly. Out of fear. Mm -hmm. So I say, trust your gut. Now, if you like your doctor and you just know, but I didn't. And the other two, you know, scheduled me for their 15 minutes and the next patient, 15 minutes, you know, cancer is a big business. It's not that they're not there to help you, but it's a money-making business. It's a billion dollar business. So when, if you're going to give your life over to something as serious as cancer, where there's things that, that can definitely help, you know, radiation, chemotherapy and, and things like that. Um, you want to be really sure that you feel okay with what's going to happen. You know, it, the bottom line is everything is in a higher power's hand anyway. I, I have friends who've had cancer, who've had chemotherapy, and now they're cancer-free. God bless them. But for me, there is no cure. There was no cure. I'm, I'm, I don't have any, I'm cancer-free for seven, eight, nine years. Um, so well, I wasn't going to have anything done to me. I was going to, uh, there was there was one choice that I chose to get better. And that was to heal my body. And that was to get out of the stress, get out of the stinking thinking, get out of the drama, get out of the, oh, I'm a cancer victim. Oh, and say, you know, screw this. I'm going to Southern California and live like a bohemian. I only have two years left. I'll die in California. At least they help you die. You know, in Kansas, they don't have assisted death. So I just changed my attitude. Now it worked for me, but I've also seen it work not with health issues, but with many mental issues with clients who have said, you know what, um, I, 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 I'm, you know, my, my blood pressure is through the roof and, you know, I can't lose weight and I, you know, and when we discuss what their real issues is, because something like losing weight, it's never, it's never about the food. We all know what to eat and what not to eat. There's a deeper issue. And the deeper issue is happiness. We all have the right to be happy. But when you put your happiness in other people's hands 100%, and your life in other people's hands without taking any responsibility, you're going to end up with that result. I can't tell you the number of people that I have spoken to who have uh, had, because I do free consultations for people who want to talk, who I have suggested to do many free things, right? They don't have to come to me and pay me free things. And they never do them because they, they want to change, but they don't want to change bad enough. Something as simple as, did you watch my video? 
It's it's on my list. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, well, it was on your list four months ago. So apparently, there's some reason that you don't want to watch a video, or you're not in enough pain, or maybe you didn't like the conversation we had. <laughs> but you know, when you're ready, you're ready. For me, I have been told many, 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 many times how to improve my life, and I ignored it. I was stressed out for many, many, many years. I was unhappy for many, many years. I was rich. I had, you know, I was kind of rich. I had fame. I didn't, I, I could read all the self-help books. Nothing worked for me because I wasn't ready. Given that, you know, there's nothing like a death sentence to wake you up. And then I went, uh-oh, here I am. Man. The great thing is that when I changed, man, I would never go back. So when I moved to California, um, and I realized I wasn't going to die, uh, not now anyway, <laughs> I didn't go back to the old way of living. I changed the way I do my career. I changed the way I do my life. I got rid of toxic people in my life. I, I mean, why go back? You know, I mean, I'll probably live to my 80s or later or something like that. I, I would guess, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in really good health. But I wouldn't go back to that life ever I, you know, I just wouldn't. I love what I do now. So a lot of people said to me, um, well, oh, it's so sad you've given up your music career. And I, I haven't given up anything. I still make records. I still give in a concert or two. But my main focus is mentoring and teaching people the life-changing experience of learning about radical self-love and care. That, to me, is better than any standing ovation. That's beautiful. And again, we have repeating themes. You have to be ready. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready. It isn't just the information. Although I do believe that sometimes having a different person give the information, sometimes it can resonate with us a little bit easier. Like, mm, I like the way that Kevin said that. And now I, I, I get it. Yes. But we still have to be ready and we have to choose in. No one can choose it for us. And you talked about how with your medical situation, you did not buy into their negativity, but that means you have to choose something else. You have to choose your own positivity. And that's, there's so many just little aspects of little tweaks where we're, we're close. We, we want the happiness. We want that thing. And yet how we find it or how we search for it is different. Where you are always searching for the happiness, but it didn't work as well as what you're doing now. So we want to be happy and we can have it. And I think that's our main message. You can have it. You can have the good health. You can have whatever it is you want um, when you're ready. Or when you're open. Just stay open to it. You know, if someone is listening to this podcast and they're resonating with what, you know, our conversation is, call me or, you know, listen to more of your podcast. Just be open to it. You know, sometimes things just kind of smack you in the face when you're not even looking for it. And it goes, wow, that's really great. Huh. You know, I wasn't looking for that particular recipe because I don't thought I liked that kind of food, but hey, I just saw it in the New York Times and that looks really yummy. Try it. What have you got to lose? But don't stay in a negative space when you don't have to, you know? Absolutely. Now, one thing you mentioned was the stinking thinking. So can we just briefly touch on that again before we close the difference between the stinking thinking and the attitude of gratitude? Well, stinking thinking is just negativity. You know, um, this isn't going to work out. I don't like this. It's, it's really fear-based. And fear is false evidence appearing real. You know, um, an attitude of gratitude is being grateful for what you have. But for me, it's more, it's like looking forward to what inspires me because I'm a creative person. If I teach people to play the dulcimer and I'm, I'm just, a, you know, that's my life. I'm a creative guy. 
so I take very simple things. You know, today it happens to be raining in San Diego, so it's kind of cold and unusually nasty compared to the normal weather here. So today I thought it would be a great day to make some soup. So I went out and I got some wonderful, tasty, different ingredients, and I'm cooking soup as we're speaking, and it smells great, and uh, it's a nourishing meal, and it's new, and it's interesting, and that, that, that's how I just create my life. You know, I say, okay, this is what I want to do, and when things don't go right, because oftentimes, you know, sometimes, I, not often, but sometimes they don't, I sit and I meditate about it through dulcet meditation, which is a process of playing the dulcet where it's sort of meditating. And I ask, what's the problem? Is it true? Is it not true? Is there a resolution to this? Do I need to worry about it? And 95% of the time, even more so, I don't. The mind, you see, here's the real problem, Linda. It's the mind. Now I'm gonna tell you something that's very interesting. You probably know this. You can't find a mind. If I ask you where your mind is, most people will say in your brain, right? If you cut open a brain, get the best brain surgeons in the world, cut open a brain, you cannot find something physical called a mind. It's true. It exists. You can't physically call up an ego. People say, oh, you know, my, my ego is the problem. Um, you can't find it. There's nothing physical. If I said, well, I have, I have trouble with an, an, e, an ego situation. Let's bring the ego to the next meeting. There's nothing physical called a meeting. So what's the, what is it? What is the mind? What is all that? They're thoughts. Thoughts are supposedly in the mind, but what does it all, what, do, what does science and the sages say about all of this? It comes down to consciousness. What's consciousness? You can call it God. You can call it G, whatever you want to call it. That's who we are. That's the self-realization. We're not the mind. We're not this body. This is a dream experience. Um, you know, when you see someone die uh, laying in a coffin, they aren't there. Their body's there. So who are you? What is going on? You know, we live in a universe that science says is expanding, but into what? So we take life, this dream experience, as the end all and as the reality, and that's why we have suffering. The reality is that we're really, this is an experience, kind of a dream experience like you have when you dream at night, but it's only temporary. Uh, it's not that real because you can change things with a thought. You can change things with a thought. And when I decided I'm getting out of Kansas, I'm going to California, I'm going to find an apartment for $1,000, which is almost impossible. I mean, I just created this idea and I walked into it and no one could figure out how I did it. And I had learned to do that when I was 13, when I created a record deal for myself. I, we create our lives. We create our stories, whether you know it or not. So if you're going to create it, might as well create one you like. Oh, amen to that. Let's create a life that we like. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Is there anything else you want to quickly cover before we close today? Um, well, people can reach me at uh, kevinross.org. Um, my book, um, Between the Notes, which just uh, got awarded an international bestseller on Amazon. You can find that on Amazon. Oh, the book is kind of cool because it comes with lyrics to different songs. And there's a CD of my, it's called Songs from the Book Between the Notes, which you can listen to while you're reading the book. And there's an audio version and an ebook. But uh, the, the thing I'd like to do actually uh, for your audiences, if they're interested, is if they'll contact me and say that they heard this podcast, uh, they can get a free uh, Zoom consult consultation. It's complimentary. Uh, and we can talk about uh, what you wanna do in your life, what you don't wanna do in your life. And if I can help you, great. And if I can't, I can probably direct you somewhere. But uh, it's those that will hear it and will resonate and say, yeah, hey, you know, what have I got to lose that'll put their, uh, I was going to say, put their finger in the dial, but that's like, what, 50 years ago we had those <laughs> dials. <so. laughs> Young people don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, 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 the cell phone, yeah. That is fantastic. Thank you for what you do and the way that you feel is peaceful. And it is quite lovely to be able to enjoy this time and partake with you. So I thank you. Oh, well, thanks for having me. It was one wonderful talking with you. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Maya Angelou. She said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Today, I invite our listeners to choose to thrive. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self-esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed, A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller, You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.